Welcome to IronCAD Tips and Tricks video. Uh, this video came about from a uh, training session that we had with some new users uh, starting to learn IronCAD and they ran into some issue issues with the history order. So I wanted to go through this and highlight some of the things that you can uh, may run into in IronCAD or any other CAD system and how you can overcome them in IronCAD. So what the user did, we started with a simple extrude and they just dragged and dropped out and set some values in here. So we'll just say we're going to set a 2 by 2 by five block. Okay, so his design process was really going to build a single table uh, of a single part, essentially making a table. So the next thing he would do is go and add a slab, for example, onto the center point of this top face. Now this is actually going to build some sort of relationships in IronCAD. So it's attaching to that surface and at that point to give some uh, relationship information, which I'll show you in just a second. So let's go ahead and just set this to say we want to set it to by ten by 10 and we'll set the height uh, value here maybe to say one so we can kind of see this. So we've got our base for our part. So what I meant before is it actually built a relationship from the second feature to this first feature that if we try to move this feature, so for example, I'll just move our tri ball up to our corner here and I just try to move this over, notice the other parts moving because it built a relationship to that center point of that face. Now, this is kind of a, a loose relationship. You can build constraints to over, override that in IronCAD. Whereas a structured part, which you would find in other CAD systems or even IronCAD structured parts, which we have here as well, that you can act, those actually will build a forced constraint. So when you drop on a point like that, or you create a sketch on a point, it's actually building a relationship or fixed relationship to that point. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to modify those. You have to go into the sketches, edit their positional information to, to undo those. In the innovative design approach, we can actually just change the behavior of its anchor. So this anchor by default has an attached surface anchor on there. We can change that to drag along surfaces, which releases that one constraint and allows it still to move along that surface if you drag it, but also frees this uh, constraint up if we turn on our tri ball again and try to move it. Notice it doesn't move around. So that's just one thing that's not really history related, but not an innovative design mode. It's not really history related, but in a structure part, that is a really uh, history dependency that you create when you uh, refer to points on existing geometry or sketches. It will build those fixed constraints. So that's one thing you have to face in structure design. The next thing the issue the user had was he came in and added some blends to his outside edges here. So he wanted to put a nice little blend feature on these edges here. Let's just say we're going to set that to 0.25. Uh, for those and set that. So he's got that created there. He's like, okay, everything looks good, but I didn't want it in the center anymore. I wanted to put it in the corners here. So like we were, we're doing before, we're going to use our tri ball to move this and we're still at our corner point. And I'm just going to move it over to this corner. Notice what happens here. So the user didn't expect this to happen. It's, he added the blends to this feature, but when he moved it over here, it extended all the way to the top slab. So this is a uh, outcome of history. So if you look at our structure in our tree, the slab and the block, it doesn't matter which order these are, uh, We since we changed our order and dragged them, it automatically changes in our cabinet. In structure design, it would remember it was block first, slab next inside of there, but the blend comes last. So when the block moves over here, it's essentially looking like this. So you have your slab, your block, and then you add a blend. So when that edge became a single edge, it automatically extended all the way up to the top. So this became a problem for the users, like you didn't understand how to do that. There's no way to really kind of overcome that because that edge is now a single circular edge unless you do multi-bodies, okay? So one way to, re, uh, to achieve this or get around this in the innovative design, well, so we'll just simply just move our slab underneath our blend and now we get our shape, okay? So that's what the user thought. Everything was looking good. However, this becomes a problem down the road again is if you try to make copies of this. So we want to make a copy to these other sides. The only tool that can do both the block and the blend is a pattern tool or a pattern feature in our case, because the tribal will only work on features, not these modification uh, features, which are blend, chamfer, uh, shell parts, and mirror features. Those can't be used with the tribal, but the pattern feature can support them. So we're going to go in here and say, well, well we're going to create a pattern of this. In this case, we're going to do a uh, bilinear pattern. And we're going to set it off eight uh, inches in both directions. And we want a copy of two on both of those. And we're just going to use this top edge to define that and go the other direction on that one. And now we can select our features, which is going to be the block feature and the blend feature. So everything looks good in the preview. And we go ahead and hit OK. Now the user thinks everything looks good here, but then notice, ah, the same thing happens. Why? Well, it has to go and repeat the structure by adding the block and the blend to each one of these. So when it does that, it sees the slab edge again, gets created, uh, the block edge is already there, the block creates it as a single edge, then the blend gets applied, 
that's why those happen on those. So there's no real way to get around this in the innovative design approach because this feature has to go into that order if you use that command. So this is kind of one of the limitations or drawbacks of history that you get with uh, certain designs. So one way to get around this in IronCAD, especially an innovative design approach, is we have a different way to apply these blend features. So let's go back to our blend. I'm just gonna delete these uh, features off. Uh, what our, our features have, they actually have independent capabilities. For example, this uh, block here, if we right click, we can go into surface reshaping. And you have a lot of different options here. You have a, um, ability to add caps, tapers, matching faces on the start and end. And this start and end is really defined by this arrow. This blue arrow is where our start profile is and it's extruding up. So this would be our end up on the top and then our sides. So you can add these type of uh, surface reshaping elements on here. You can also do uh, bevels and chamfers on here. So we can go in to add a, be uh, a bevel or blend to the bottom start, the end, or the sides, or all intersection edges if we wanted to pick up this edge up here. So we're gonna just do the side edges. We're gonna add a blend and do the same thing, 0.25, hit okay. And notice it only applies it to that particular blend. So now if we do the pattern feature, again, we'll select this and do the same thing. We'll select this top edge and our other edge over here. And now if we select our feature, hit OK. Since that's part of the feature, it gets copied over to the other sides and it maintains that relationship. So a very handy way to do this in our innovative design approach using the IntelliShape features. Again, helping you get around some of the limitations of history. And structure parts can do similar things. You know, they can, they can carry some information, but you can also do multi-body to get around this type of uh, operation inside of there. But that's just another advanced uh, thing you need to learn for structure design instead of innovative design. But I wanted to highlight this as a good little example uh, that users may run into when they're first learning IronCAD and starting to understand the concepts of uh, traditional CAD where you have a feature history order and the dependencies that you run into when you create certain commands or certain orders of your shapes. So hopefully you find this useful and uh, we'll continue adding some more tips and tricks.